So I'm here with Greek Gadget Guru. Uh, he's done a lot of YouTube videos on just awesome superhero related gadgets and Thank you. James Bond stuff. You're welcome. And, and just a lot of really interesting stuff that not a whole lot of other people are doing. Uh, we've recently been working together on a project or two here and there, and I'm excited to have you on the pod. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Cool. Um, so, yeah, the project is coming along. It's, uh, if you've ever seen the movie Predator, you know, the, the famous quote by Arnold Schwarzenegger where he goes, Get to the chopper! You have, like, this alien that has a shoulder-mounted plasma blaster and uh, in, in lieu of the fact that we don't have a plasma blaster, we're using a 95-watt laser that um, pretty much if you were to shine it on the wall and you looked at it with the naked eye, you would have permanent blindness. It's like... Uh, terrifying. It's terrifying. Yeah, it's, and everyone that I've told, told about it says, why do you need that? I said, it's for my YouTube channel. And they're just like, okay. It's like, it's the ultimate, like, scapegoat for awkward <laughs> conversation. It's like when people say to you, like, why do you need, like, you know, an AK-47? It's like, oh, I have a gun channel on YouTube. Oh. Like, yeah, of course. That. I mean, this it's is for work. education. It's for inspiring people. Which it In fact, is. I can write it off on my taxes. Yeah, that's true. So if I can take a couple steps back, I, I guess I kind of want to just talk more about your, your sort of you as a person and, and, you know, how you get into this role. So okay, what, what sort of brought you to, to make gadgets and put it on YouTube? Like, where did that, where did that drive come from? Um, I think at a young age, I got really bored with like playing video games and just the repetitiveness of it. And so um, there was a game where they had this thing called a ballistic knife and it was like the coolest thing i've ever seen it was a they're completely illegal because they're considered like <laughs> class three like almost like silenced and it shoots the blade using this really high tension spring and a compression spring and so i built it using like all these home depot gadgets and nice. within like a month i had over a million views that's and, awesome and that was I, your first video uh that was in my second video my first video was um, you could use a Wiimote and connect it to an iPhone that was jailbroken and you could play emulated games using the like D-pad on the, on the Wiimote. Nice. So I just like had one of those cheap uh, Wii controllers from Mario Kart and I just glued like an iPhone onto it with like a case and that was, so that was like a DIY emulator or Game Boy thing. Very cool. But it sounds like you kind of found form with, with like more of like the not quite weapons but like future... I guess future weapon, like conceptual, like weapon systems for for like the, uh, like something Q would make in James Bond. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think it's always important, um, for the sake of spreading awareness, is to build something that has some level of existence within pop culture, so that you're kind of riding that wave. Of, Smart. Yeah. Otherwise, you're kind of trying to reinvent the wheel, and once you get popular enough and you have a following, like they'll pretty much watch everything that you like you put out there because they like you but until you nice. get to that point it's kind of an uphill battle so you have to find little um, little hacks in the search engine optimization I admire the heck out of that kind of uh, I guess marketing prowess like that's one thing yeah, that's always sort of escaped me thanks yeah it's it's a challenge but uh, yeah so that was that was a big thing and then I found out that I could monetize it and I remember getting like my first um, first check in the mail, and then that was awesome. And then I got the uh, the silver play button for a hundred thousand subscribers, awesome. and so I have that like sitting on my wall. And that was whenever my parents were like, "Okay, like he's he's getting awards here." Like that was <laughs> that was when they were really impressed because before it was just like, "Oh, he's what are you doing with this YouTube crap?" Yeah, like... I remember my I remember my my mom going. <laughs> should we be concerned he's making weapons? And my, dad, <laughs> and my dad was like, no, they're from his video games. Oh, okay. Like, it was it was another one of those, like, scapegoats. I was also the kid that would make, like, the trebuchet or the potato cannon or, yeah. like, the ballista. And so I remember one time when I was younger, I uh, my mom really wanted me to join the Boy Scouts of America, and I, I just was not into it that much. And But... I really wanted to build a ballista, and so we made a deal that if I joined the Boy Scouts, I could build a ballista. <laughs> and uh, That's funny. I, thank you. <laughs> so, and you quit I'm, immediately. 
I quit immediately. It lasted two weeks I was in the Boy Scouts, uh, which is about how long it took me to build the ballista, and then I quit. <laughs> I think I took it to one jamboree, uh, what, you know, like a get-together for Boy Scouts. Oh, uh, that's cool. Did you use like PVC pipe as, as like the bow? or? Well, so we used, um, or I should say I used, uh, it was a 4x4, four four, and then I, I had taken um, a table saw, and I ran it through to cut two grooves, then I sanded kind of to round off the edges. And then I had a piece of oak uh, for like the thing across, and then I used bungee cable. Uh, and then I had a boat winch strapped to the back to really crank it back and, and get a ton of tension. Wow, yeah, and, that's cool. Yeah, we did we did stupid things with it. So like I, I was able to convince my high school physics teacher to let us uh, like I could I got to bring it in <laughs> and we would like messing with trajectories and you know calculating where it would land. It's, we didn't actually do any math that day. It was just messing around, yeah, shooting arrows. That's cool. It was a lot of fun. Um, I think uh, I was not the not the smartest thing I did, but I think I terrified some Cornell student by uh, firing an arrow uh, near their campus one time. I mean, you know, it, was, it wasn't anywhere where it could hurt anybody, but they didn't know that. So wow, that sounds pretty powerful. For... Yeah, it was. It, I mean, you definitely could have done some damage with this thing, uh, but you know, that was never our motive. <laughs> so, That's awesome. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. But winch is, is definitely, or winch is uh, a, a dead giveaway that it has a lot of power. That was the kicker, because like the way, so I, I, I sort of cheated and got off an online instruction manual from someone else that had built one, and I remember um, theirs didn't require a boat winch, but I really wanted to get like a more, you know, more power out of it, more force, and so it's like, how can I really, you know, push this past the limits of what I could do with my own arms? And right. That was the next step. That's really cool. Thanks, man. Um, so, I guess... What are some other things you've worked on that you're like particularly proud of? Like, what were some some projects for you that that kind of sort of defined your, your career of making gadgets, or, or just you know, like what you would consider it to be uh, kind of pinnacle moments? Um, probably the the deployable shield. That's a good um, one. That one was really innovative. I kind of I saw a couple of different. By the way, is there like a way people can find that uh, if they're viewing our channel? Yeah, I mean. When we edit this, maybe we could just play like a clip, but uh, yeah, right, we cool. can leave like a, just type in deployable shield, Iron Man inspired deployable shield or Percy Jackson deployable shield. Nice. Um, that has like, I don't even know, I think over like 2 million views, something along those lines. That's impressive as hell. Yeah, it's, it's, it was like one of those projects that I released uh, a little bit hastily and I wish I would have edited it a little better, but. Um, overall, it, it really kind of, uh, actually it was funny cause I went to Maker Faire and I wear the mask, but I was unmasked. So I like, you know, was just going around Yeah. and, um, I showed the shield to Stephen Hawes, which <laughs> and he guy. goes, dude, I know you. So it was like, <laughs> that's, uh, that's a great impression of him. Yeah. He, he's a, he's a really enthusiastic guy. He's like, a, he's a loud personality for sure. Yeah. I was just talking sure. with him today. Good guy. Um, yeah, so that was cool because it was combining, that was when Tech Shop was a thing, so it was a, a massively uh, useful resource where I had access to like laser cutting for the first time, I learned CAD, I used uh, a 3D printer to make a piece for the electronic uh, torque or warm gear motor that spun the thing, um, and I threw some hardware, a little bit of, it was just a, a lot of different, I, I really kind of took my my gadgets, my creations, the next level because I was using these like next tier tools. Yeah, so that was that was cool. And I think I won like a three D printer because I built the prototype. That was like a five thousand dollar printer. Nice. So it was like build the prototype using a, like a CNC mill, and th that I also got as a as a promo, and then I used <laughs> that to build the prototype. And I won a uh, DJI Mavic or DJI drone, like the one that uh, South Park shows in their episodes. Yeah, like, yeah, the, the DJI. One looks like a little squid or something. I immediately smashed the, that. Like it, I, was, I, I took it out. I was trying to fly it, smashed that. I'm like oh, well. and then I. You know, <laughs> it's and then different I, when it's a prize. Yeah, right? and then like the next month, I won it like November, and then December they had like the year long uh, winners, and I got runner up and got this. Five thousand dollar Airwolf printer. Was this Tech Shop that you won that from? No, this was the Boca Bearings Innovation Contest. Oh, cool. Um, I don't think that they like made. I think that was the last year they ever did that. Ah, that's unfortunate. But, Sounds like they had some good prizes. Yeah, yeah. They they I think the top prize was like ten thousand dollars or something. Not bad. Which like I don't think got them very much publicity. 
and it's probably realized that it wasn't like a good investment but that makes sense well we had some events where we gave away prizes and like I mean the cost per acquisition of, of like a contact it just didn't make financial sense like a lot of the time I mean we're probably going to keep doing it because I feel like there's some variables we could tweak mm-hmm. but I mean that's that's the tricky bit with that right is I mean you can spend so much money so quickly trying to get promotions and unless you're strategic it doesn't always pay off yeah yeah and a lot of people aren't really gonna follow through they're, they're strictly for the freebie and yeah exactly so we we had one where it was a virtual event with people that could drive our drones over the internet so you know for COVID we wanted to make it more interactive and we were giving away first person drones not DGI's uh, but something a little less fancy but I remember um, <laughs> there was both times we gave away one of those drones it might have been like a third or a fourth giveaway, but I remember two in particular where one was, um, you know, we were doing it um, and then just this random dude swat, swiped in, got the fastest time and then just peaced out and <laughs> got the drone and then we never never saw him again. And then same thing the other time. It was, it was, it was a student <laughs> at, the, at Carnegie Mellon University near here and um, he, he came in, got the drone and then I remember, because he was local, I, I just gave him the display model. And so, you know, it's, it's a pandemic. So I went to his place, masked up. And, you know, I said, hey, you know, um, yeah, I, I don't want to leave this outside because, you know, it's, it's a drone in a box. It's probably going to get stolen. Uh, he's like, well, I'll, I'll be right up the stairs. And so I'm like, all right. And then so I, I gave it to him. And I was just like, you know, can, can you at least, like, tell me you're going to enjoy this? I just spent a lot of money here. Like, I want to at least know it's making someone happy. Yeah. You know, and so he, he you know, know he, just, he, he was sorry. grateful enough. What's that? I'm gonna just sell it on eBay or something. Yeah, probably, right? Uh, I, I don't know. I hope people are getting at least some fun out of those, but you know, I mean, the real hope is, you know, that you like you give it to somebody from a big company that ends up becoming a client or whatever. I mean, we do engineering services, but yeah, it doesn't always work that way. I, I feel good about putting goodwill into the uh, into the world, as it were. Yeah, that was nice. Thanks. I mean, who doesn't like giving stuff away? You know, it's it's. Uh, You've probably given more things away than I have in my lifetime on my channel. <laughs> like I think, you think? Oh, one hundred percent. Like as far as quantity goes, I'm. I feel like my contribution is the, this blood, sweat, and tears that I put into the the project. Like, um, that's a serious contribution. Though. I mean, you can't. Yeah, today, yeah. Like you were saying earlier before we started recording that you know, like time is more valuable than money. And, and, you know, it depends what amount of money, but for the most part, I agree with that. I mean, time is finite. Like, everybody that I've talked to who has achieved, you know, about this particular topic, you know, like, what I would consider, you know, F you money, like, like enough money where you can go up to any person in the world and say F you without worry of not being able to get paid again huh. uh, is the definition of that. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, they all say that time is the most valuable resource in their lives. I mean, you never get it back. And so, you right on. That's, that's interesting. But that's at the cool. same point, yeah, I, I feel like you, you, you got to be humble with it. So, like, there's, I know so many, not so many, I know two, like, real Fortune 500 CEOs. And both of those people, um, I don't see very often, but when I do see them, like, they're just incredibly gregarious and, and nice and, and humble. And, and, you know, they don't put an assistant between you and them, which a lot of people seem to do. And I, I've done that at points in my life. Uh, mm-hmm. and I don't think it's a good way to behave. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, you know, it's, I feel like there's there's like this arc where like you get a little bit of power, you know, and you, you use it like crazy. And then you get a lot of power and you kind of become hopefully like, you know, just more down to earth, you know, as a result of having been around. Yeah. I, I'm I speculating think, I'm not that powerful. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think at some point you have to sort of filter out time wasters. You know, and pe- or people that will take advantage of you. I think that's like... There's no getting around that. I agree. Yeah. And so, you know, you want to show good faith, but, you know, some people are... They, they're they not really looking to uh, be reciprocate anyway. Like, they're looking just to take. And so that's that can be challenging. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> that's tricky. And, uh, you know, you don't always detect it right away. Uh, Thanks for this Benny straw, by the way. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, I figured with the mask, uh, the straw would be critical to having a drink with like you. It's like drinking out of a straw, some whiskeys. What do you think of the whiskey, by the way? It's uh, it's Basil Hayden. I believe it's from Kentucky. I think it's just, it'd be better if I was drinking out of a glass because, <laughs> like, to get, you have to drink a decent, I don't know. It's good. Well, you like it. I like it. 
But uh, yeah, we can we can drink some out of the glass after. There's a reason we don't drink out of straws. It's, yeah, you know, <laughs> it's not pleasant. Yeah, it does feel kind of like hospital or kid like, but I mean, I, yeah. you just get uh, until you do the unmasking video. I mean, if I want to get, get you on the pod, I, I feel like that's how we have to do it. Yeah, yeah. No worries. <clears throat> so, um, oh yeah, one of the things that there's this there's this. Uh, college professor Jordan Peterson um, he talks a lot about the, the dominance hierarchy and it affects a lot of people's like emotions because of like you feel like you're low on the totem pole you know you're not going to feel very good about yourself and so Been there. yeah so um, part of, of the way he, he describes it he talks about these archetypes within history of like going into you know you have a uh, like the like Jonah and the whale, Jonah going to, to save his father uh, in the well in the belly of the whale, and or, is that why he went in there? It's been so I, long. There, there's since there's some story like you know it's father's in the belly of the whale or something along those lines. I stories. didn't realize. Okay, that makes more sense than just arbitrarily camping out inside a whale. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and then like you know slaying the dragon, and so it's like it's facing uncertainty. Uh, when well, that whale or that dragon is probably more dominant than you, to be fair. But right, but it's a representation David and Goliath, of, I guess. of it's yeah, but it's a representation that's kind of gone across time, which is that uh, if you go and you face something that is a challenge, something that you're afraid of, the unknown essentially is what it comes down to. Um, then you're going to come back with knowledge, and then to share that and articulate it with the world is. A very powerful experience and like you're gonna benefit from that regardless like if you face a some form of challenge you know yeah I agree on the adversity um, and I also am a fan of sharing it but I guess I'd like to hear kind of more about your logic on you know what makes uh, sharing it with the world you know like where the benefit from that comes from just to kind of break it down and get philosophical um, I mean I think I think that there's just a good feeling of knowing that you're contributing something to society. You know, like, yeah. it's just like a, I agree. it's a good faith. Uh, there's, there's a lot of kids in, that have looked at my, my, uh, deployable shield and they've made it their science fair project. That's so cool. Yeah. And they're like in India. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I live in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania and there's some kid in India that is wants to do this or, um, you know, the, or, they're just, just to inspire someone is, I think that people are always sort of gravitating towards, especially men, um, we're looking for influence and leadership like that. That's a very fulfilling feeling. So to yeah. influence others is, is very satisfying. I agree. Uh, there's a few times in my life where I've had that experience and had somebody thank me for advice or mentorship or experience that I gave them. I remember there was, uh, I, I think I might have told this story on the podcast before, so I apologize, but uh, I, when I went to, I, I lived in upstate New York when I was a kid, and I remember I, I moved at a young age, and so I was kind of an outcast. I ended up hanging out with all these skater kids, and they were fun. They were, they were nice. A lot of them were transplants, too. We got along really well. And um, I remember um, one of them ended up becoming a software engineer and moving to Manhattan. And he told me at one point that like, I was the one that influenced him into engineering huh. and it felt really good. Yeah, exactly. Like I, I just, I felt really positive about it. Yeah. Um, I had another friend, um, who I, I won't say who it is, but they'll probably be on the podcast, uh, at some point. Um, not probably they will <laughs> at yeah. some point. But I remember we both were involved in some projects at the Carnegie Mellon Robotics Club together, and um, they had uh, left to uh, go to a, a high tech, uh, you know, job after they got their master's degree. I was still undergrad, but they said, you know, you've taught me a lot of things. I really appreciate it, you know, like, and I felt really good in that moment. So. Yeah, it, it, but I, after you, I mean, it definitely is a motivational. Like, it, it sort of st stands as. Uh, I mean, it stands out to you. It's just like a stop loss in, in, in life because things are moving so fast, and you know you're remembering all these different things, and it, it just it's like um, a very pivotal moment. Like something kind of something goes on in your head. You're like, it's just a feeling of of uh, 
I don't know, it's just accomplishment. Yeah. Is there any one like or two that in particular kind of stood out to you of those people that have taken the time to like thank you for your contribution to their life? Um, there have been like some emails here and there, but I think like I think the element of the mask kind of makes me a mysterious character. Like, I think it, it puts it puts people on a, like somewhat of a defense of like that this guy doesn't want to be bothered. Um, but I think like like today when I was on the Discord. Um, which I haven't like logged into <laughs> months, and I just kind of resurrect every once in a while. And they're like, "The king is here." That's so awesome. It's really it's weird. Be a good it's feeling. kind of funny, but uh, you know, they'll like want to reach out to me. They say, "Hey, I want to like DM you later or something." I've been wanting to ask you. You know what I mean? So there, there's like an element of like people want my opinion on things, so they value my opinion, on, or so I think like it's kind of an amalgamation of those experiences. Um, as far as kind of individual things, not not really in particular. That makes sense. Um, I've seen some people that have be, that were fans, and then they've created their own YouTube channels, and then they've now exceeded me. That's kind of Are you like serious? <laughs> yeah, yeah, like there's one. The that, students become the master. That's yeah, the really, same. really. Yeah. Um, and and so that's that's kind of cool, to yeah. to to know that you had some sort of part of their journey, you know. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And like, you know, when you see someone like that that's come so far, I mean, the one guy I mentioned that thanked me has had so many career accomplishments since then. And, you know, I mean, I I, I feel good to have to have influenced maybe in some small early way, you know, yeah. that, that journey. I mean, it definitely, it, it'll come full circle. And if not, then, if not directly, you're still feeding off of that moment, you know? Yeah. It definitely drives you. That's funny. So I'm, I'm thinking about it now, and I, I don't really talk about this that often on the air, but I will anyway. And so I feel like sometimes when I'm not getting that that reinforcement or, or, you know, like I'm not, and this is probably just a personality defect on my part, when I'm not working on interesting projects, when I'm not helping people out, I, I feel less less whole. Like it, it feels like, like I'm missing something, like, like I'm empty. Right, but when I'm when I'm working with people, um, when I'm contributing, when you know my knowledge is valued, um, or when I'm able to you know just to, to make myself useful, uh, I mean my self esteem goes up. I, I just feel, I don't know, I feel good. I feel like I feel like life yeah. is worth living, and, and everything is where it should be. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah, it's an interesting phenomenon, but I definitely agree. Who has influenced you? And is there anybody you've gone out of your way to thank? Um, as a, thank you. You're welcome. As a, I, uh, let me think. So there's uh, James Hobson. He's the hacksmith. He's uh, based in Kitchener, Ontario. He has... Oh, there's a Kitchener. That's cool. Yeah. Clear Path Robotics is there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think he's actually might have worked with them for some reason. I believe it. Um, he his channel has exceeded like ten million subscribers, and I mean he has, I think like ten or twelve employees working. And, and cheers, cheers. Um, he's a really cool dude because at first I was kind of like, I thought of him as my competitor, and I you know, but now I'm just like rooting him on because there's That's just awesome. so much. There's so much so many challenges and I really have a lot of respect for him because uh, YouTube in the audience is like is very critical and a lot of times it's kids who don't understand you know never picked up a soldering iron or a wrench in their life they just think that you know everything is just going to happen overnight and <laughs> it's, so it's frustrating because you don't you don't always get that positive reinforcement so you have to kind of have uh, some grit to, to be able to put up with that the other weird thing is on YouTube, like you don't know what the who it is. Like, it could be a kid who's talking to you in person. He's like, "Oh yeah, like that's that's nice. Like we'll we'll try and get to that." But there's this like arbitrary mind. Uh, um, so it just depends on who you are as a person. Like arbitrarily, like who is this person? If it's somebody like an adult, you're gonna you're, their opinion is gonna carry a lot more. So that's that's annoying. No, that um, makes sense. I mean, I, I think there's a confidence that you only get if you haven't had experience and. Right, been you know kicked in the nuts by life as it were a few times. Right, yeah, definitely. There's like a an ignorance there that's so frustrating. 
Yeah. Uh, the other guy is um, the King of Random, which he actually he actually was really interesting because he was able to systemize his video production process and he kind of took a step out and was only doing the projects that he thought were really cool because he was able to basically implant a new person so that he could have the lifestyle that he wanted. Um, Wait, so he, he subcontracted his content creation? Yeah. To, That's another, awesome. to a new host. And like only because YouTube's algorithm changed where it was based, it was favoring uh, quantity of content and upload schedules over the quality. And so he had to kind of adapt. And so instead of doing, you know, some really elaborate trebuchet that he made out of PVC, he would just do like, what happens if you mix like Coke and slime? You know, oh, geez. he's like, little, like, you know, he's, he was, he was just basic. high school science fair. Right. Yeah, stuff, exactly. Yeah. Like more like experiments rather than some elaborate build. And, um, he actually, unfortunately, he, he passed away like a couple Sorry, years yeah. ago in a, in a, in a paragliding accident. At but, least that's a baller way to go. Yeah, I'm really. <laughs> but, uh, right. but yeah, he, he was really cool because he, even though he had millions of subscribers, he always took time to like reply to my Facebook messages and give me advice. That's awesome. Um, uh, and the same thing with James. I mean, he has a really busy schedule and, um, it's just nice that, you know, you get that sort of recognition they haven't like you mentioned that's almost earlier. like yeah yeah that full circle thing where somebody gets enough clout that they don't have anything to prove or you know they're, they're just down to earth or maybe it says something about your character you know that they're willing to to sure. carve out time yeah. to talk to you too yeah i mean they're not it's like they have any they're not too good for me of sorts you know like i'm still but i mean even still i think that they probably do that even with just a random fan who emails them they just seem like that type of person um it's it's like a weird mystery of the the idea of being able to create a community because there's always that super fan who is able to make such a difference. I mean, like think about the the virality. I mean, there's always that one guy that shared it on Instagram or Facebook, and so like you know, I, I feel like when you take the time to to respond to those people, um, there's it pays dividends in, in the long term, which is kind of neat. That's awesome. But yeah, those guys have definitely influenced me. Um, yeah, was, I mean, you know, oh, after you. Sorry. There's another guy, and um, Jarris of all. He he was interesting because he's a, a couple years older than me, and he also had like a career change, like I am currently going through, uh, going um, more or less like going into, and uh, he just has he just has like such a it's more of his mindset. His his projects are more. Uh, they're not as engineering oriented. They're they almost come from like a an artist aspect. Cool. Like he kind of combines the functionality, but more from like a prop aspect. Yeah. Like it, it looks really good, but he's not afraid to just put like hot glue in there. And like <laughs> he's not worried about like creating nice brackets and like wires. Like he just he he makes it work, and that's it. But then he, he'll like airbrush it and it looks sexy. That approach is valid too. I mean, yeah. I think it just depends what you're trying to accomplish. So yeah, yeah. If you want a product that is staying power and is going to last, I mean, you want to engineer it and, yeah. and make it robust and yeah. inside and out. But I mean, if you just need to get something on a video and yeah. it doesn't matter if it breaks and you've got to service it five times while you're making that video, I mean, that's a valid approach. Yeah. I did have one guy who reached out to me via email and he said... <laughs> The way he worded it was hilarious. Like I'd be pay, I'd be willing to pay up to three hundred dollars for your laser for a laser watch. So I said, okay, that will be three hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> so he just like he's an engineer, so he yeah. knows like you know the 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 complexity of three D printing stuff, but, but not negotiate. Right? Yeah. But I mean, <laughs> the way that I built it from from because I built it from like an engineer's mindset of trying to make things fit the way they did it it helped in that sense because then i was able to replicate it fairly easily you know what nice. i mean i wasn't like it wasn't just a fluke that things went together it was like calculated in it. And so so you designed for manufacturer yeah more or less but that's kind of like scary when you figure like the threshold of a legal laser is like five six hundred milliwatts and i have this <laughs> 
two point five watt laser that could blind someone if they shined it directly. You know. So did you worry at all about legal liability when you put that out in the world? I mean, I'm not trying to. Yeah, I mean, I. Hole, but... Like when I sold it to him. Yeah. Um, I had him like, I I had him in the email at least so it was documented. You know, say that he was gonna just. You know, I asked him like, why does he want it? And he said he just thought it'd be cool to pop, like, you know, shoot balloons or like light matches. It's just you yeah. know, like a an interesting item that he could just kind of. I wouldn't even say he should have like taken out at parties, be a party trick. But I know <laughs> some people just like that honest. stuff. Like some people like the memorabilia and like the original props from from Star Wars, and that doesn't have the capability to blind someone. But like realistically, yeah. it's the like the aspect to it. It's just the wow factor. The it's like a personal interest. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I guess there is there is some concern. Um, I always think about whether or not I should really show like step-by-step -step DIY of how to build something because I can venture into some territory, but it's not like... Yeah, I feel like a lot of guys on TV will censor the like the explosive recipes and stuff. Right, yeah, that's true. But it's like, it's very easy for you to just make a mistake with explosives, you know, like a spark or, I don't know, it could, it could be simple as like a static sh shock, like, you know, we have accidents at gas stations with cell phones and stupid shit like that but well people just don't know what like i, right. I shouldn't say that that comes a little condescending but I, I it's impossible to impart on every single human being on earth yeah. uh, a safety you know right understanding and knowledge and culture so i think like the safety net is the fact that if you can do this you probably are smart enough to know, to not damage someone you know what i mean like, yeah yeah like it's it's not like a a, a perfect safety net but like most most of the time it's you don't want to put this in the hands of a child or a kid yeah like most of them don't know how to use a soldering iron or you know have the components it's just they think it's cool because i think everyone at some point like you said it's like that 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 level of ignorance like you think you know everything until you get kicked in the nuts it's like <laughs> when you see something you're like oh i can do that yeah now. of course yeah. it's like now they think they have the knowledge to do it but when they actually sit down, like they're probably going to struggle with just soldering something up, you know? I've caught myself being that guy too. Like, I feel like when I got out of grad school in particular, and even when I was, I mean, you know, I, I remember I was like 15 years old. And I thought if I only knew now, or sorry, if I only knew what I was 12, what I knew now, like, I wish I could go back to that version of me and tell him. And then I was 20. I, if I could go, only I could go back to 15 year old me and tell him all the stuff I've learned. Yeah, and then you know I turned like twenty five. Like finally, I could go back to those other guys. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm thirty two now, and I remember thinking, um, you know, just sure, like I, I, I've given life. up on this concept. Like, I, I, it, you know, I'm just gonna keep getting older, and I'm going to mature and learn more and more, and then I'm gonna become senile. And yeah, you know, that's life. <laughs> right. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's hindsight twenty twenty type of thing. I mean, there's a lot of things that I like. I think one of the, one of the aspects that I probably I wish I would have done was to not be so like so obsessive about trying to prove myself as an as an engineer and just make this shit because it, it really came down to quantity of of the builds and sometimes um, making something that someone can replicate is a lot more inspiring than something that the majority of people never ever be able to do like the number of people who have actually been in had a 3d printer in person in front of them is like you know probably a very very small percentage but it's going world. up for sure yeah yeah it's, it's going up the price like, is going down right but like you know yeah. kids in india like probably I mean, oh yeah no, I mean, that's depending true. on the area they, they they might not have access to that stuff and so you know there was one guy he made these uh, Jay Laser, the guy who watched my my content when he was a kid. And, um, he took like these two cigarette lighters and he took them apart, he filled them up with soap water, <laughs> and then was able to recharge them using a butane canister, like by holding the button down and then putting the butane thing on the barb so that it would basically back, bubbles. It would black backflow, and it was just like these. The, and he put like a binder clip on it to press down. The two lighters that were on his wrist with a piece of Velcro, and nice. it was a, and it was a web shooter, and it just shot like soapy water at the wall. Oh, that's and, cool. That's very got, gutter tech too. Right, I love it. and it got like 
10 million views. Holy crap. <laughs> and then I like make this grappling hook with like CO2 cartridges. I'm swinging, <laughs> swinging from a fucking harness and like That's way more engineering. out of a tree and it gets like 150,000. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I'm just like, fuck my life. I could have just done this in like, you know, in a, in a college dorm. Yeah, yeah, and, exactly. And I would have gotten more views. And <laughs> so it's just like that aspect of things. Like, ah, I should have just swallowed my pride and just done stuff. Yeah. Um, and explained like, you know, these are my limitations. And then I could have upgraded once I had the budget and the production, you know, whatnot. But I was always trying to, um, you know, prove myself in yeah. by other means. Which well, is, I, I grapple with that a lot too. Because, I mean, as you know, I, I do you know, engineering, you know, contract engineering, a design for a living. I mean, you know, I run teams of, of engineers and I mean, I guess my professional image relies on my ability to convey, you know, competence and professionalism and, and the ability to solve really, really difficult problems. And so, I mean, I, I like to do gutter tech too, for stuff too, for fun. I mean, at times. So like one of my friends and I one time made a machine and you, I think I've showed it to you. It, it dispenses one dollar bills and you can you can dial on a gauge like the the dollars per hour uh -huh. and so it's an art project it's meant to illustrate what it looks like to make like seven or three thousand dollars an hour in terms of just money falling into your lap oh uh, yeah that's and smart. so thanks yeah it's kind of fun and and um you know one of uh do you know um I'm blanking on the name but it's not super important uh kenny chen no. Oh, wait. Uh, no. He's like, uh, he started like a Pittsburgh AI organization. He's big in the startup community. It's not important. But he um, he helped us make a video about the thing, and neither me nor my uh, guy I worked on it with were comfortable work putting people, it on um, What's that place called in what's that? Or, no. Shit. I don't want to interrupt you. It's all right. No, 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 you're not. Uh, Bobby's Apollo's joint. Uh, he, he was at a at like a co-working space. The CMU for... co-working space that's like close to uh what is it called east liberty i think he did yeah asunder was the one he was at yeah something like that yeah he was at asunder um and uh yeah no i've, I've had uh good alpha good, lab alpha lab he might be he might have been with i i bet you he's affiliated yeah i don't know if he ever had a staff position with him i know he was on staff at asunder yeah Cool. But he's a solid guy. Um, yeah. I think he just went back to uh, school to get more into public policy because of his AI interest. Um, uh, he, he's really interested in policy making there. But solid dude. I mean, he he <laughs> he was nice enough to record into my phone the pronunciation for Chinese proverbs because I was emceeing a wedding uh, with a Chinese bride and American groom uh, in <laughs> Portugal. It was really fun. And I memorized all these proverbs, and I, I practiced the pronunciation on the flight over, like over and over and over again. So I knew it cold. And then the bride didn't like any of them; they were all too edgy for her. <laughs> so, you know, I was trying to, I was, you know, I was trying to roast them a little bit. And so, you know, I was like, yeah, she's gonna control his life. He's a nerd. <laughs> so I was going off on those things, just you know, trying to have a little fun with it. And the the guy wasn't offended by any of it. Uh, Adam, you know, close friend of mine, uh, he, he's a really high up position at Google now. But um, Gia the bride, she just didn't want to be made fun of. And so, yeah, it's all right. I mean, I, I adapted my speech, you know, kind of per their requirements. But That's cool. Kenny, Kenny was the one that took the time to train me on, you know, like how to pronounce, you know, and sound fluent and oh, kind of fake right. it. So I listened to his voice over and over and over again. And, wow. Uh, yeah. That was it, a lot of work. It was, but you know, nobody has ever asked me to MC their wedding before. So I feel like that's, that's a pivotal moment in their lives. Yeah. I wanted to make it uh, a good day for them. Yeah, that's where that came from. That's really cool. I, Thanks. I like that. Thanks. Yeah, he's he's a solid dude. Um, but anyway, he took the time to record this video of us with this money machine, and the tone of the video. Um, I probably shouldn't have said his name before saying this, but it's out there, so I'll just go with it. The tone of the video was like, you know, we did this profound thing, and and because myself and the other person that worked on it, you know, make a living. Uh, designing, you know, sort of machine tools and products and just, you know, super highly engineered stuff. Neither of us felt comfortable putting our names on 
a video that tonally represented something we put together in, in an afternoon as, as being profound in any way mm. because it wasn't engineered enough. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't like polished enough. It, yeah, I mean, yeah, it was put yeah. together with plywood and, you know, bent wire and screws. Yeah, and there was an Arduino on there. I mean, it was, it was pretty your, hacky. Your trophy rack in your house. Yeah, it is. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm proud. I mean, I like the, con I'm proud of the concept. And, yeah. and I mean, you know, it works and it's yeah. kind of a neat conversation piece. So that's why I put it there. Yeah. I, I have this idea for like an alarm clock that um, I think it's like if you want to make a million dollars a year and still have like, you know, a regular work schedule, you're making like a hundred dollars. Uh, what would it be like? A hundred dollars a minute or something. Or however, I forget what the actual what it comes down to. I can but like, type it in, but I feel like that would distract. But what's that? I said I, I was going to type it in, then I resisted the urge. <laughs> type it in? Well, do the math and back out the number, but oh, I, yeah. I, I don't want to stop the conversation. Yeah, I, I don't remember what it was. But anyway, like, pressing the snooze button will, like, light this $100 bill on fire. <laughs> <laughs> so it just, like, it's just, like, putting it in perspective, like, you just press snooze, you lost 15 minutes, that would be your million dollar, that would be, like, or whatever it is. You know, the, the irony, or months. not the irony, the funny thing about that is is that now you're losing $200. So it's the opportunity cost plus the money you're lighting on fire. Right, exactly. Yeah. But that would be motivating. I mean, I've heard of celebrities. Um, uh, the concept is like, you know, you're trying to lose a certain amount of weight by a certain amount of time. And if you don't do it, you can instruct like a personal assistant to give, um, you know, $500 to something horrible, like, like the Ku Klux Klan, <laughs> something you would never support. Right. And so, um, I don't know, I've heard of stranger things. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, it's sad, I don't know. Yeah, yeah I think it's a cool idea. I, I would... Uh, yeah, it, it, it would be... Uh, it'd be a fun concept, but, like, I've thought about the element of, like, YouTube. There's always, You're always trying to get that reactionary factor. Like... Um, you have like the the cell phone video of uh, people stealing packages. Wait, what's that one? It's like Ma Mark Rover is a, like a, a NASA former NASA engineer, and he basically makes a project every month. And he has the, like he's gone through three iterations of this. It's this package that it's like a package that when people steal it, they open it up, and he's got like four cameras <laughs> and he can talk to them and he has fart spray and this is a glitter bomb yeah the glitter bomb yeah, exactly yeah. that's exactly what it is and uh it's really interesting but it sprays glitter all over their cars for the viewers so, yeah like yeah. like the, the the most fine glitter that like you know sticks to everything and just so obnoxious <laughs> like it's just going to cost you money to get your car detailed or whatever yeah, and, um, it's like, screw you, you stole my package. Right. But it's like the wow factor. Like, there's so many elements to it where it's like, you know, who's doing the stealing? Like, what are the reactions? Whereas, like, you know, you, you kind of have to take that into account when you make content. It's, How do people react to something like that? Like, like do, do, they, um, do they throw it to the ground? Do they engage it? Like, uh, if he talks to them, does he actually manage people, to get some, a conversation going? Well, like, the first iteration, like, people try to put it back in the box. Or they try to, like, push the something you know i don't know they try to um wherever the 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 glitter is coming from they like hold their hands around <laughs> it, they, like, they smush it down but what he did was he made it so like there's a spring-loaded locking mechanism so like once it reaches past the spring comes down and then it it's it can't be yeah yeah like it, it's basically cool. this bar comes out that's spring-loaded so you have to <laughs> and it's internal so like you can't do it like once you would have to take it apart to be able to so it's he, or hit it with sufficient force to break the mechanism, I would think. Yeah, it's like made out of like a steel bar. Oh, yeah. And then he oh, like, you know, had it professionally 3D printed, so it's just, you know, flawless. And um, <laughs> The irony so is that it's probably worth more than the decoy that it's pretending to be to get it stolen. Right, yeah. But he's trying to get that, like, uh, that, that social factor to it. And yeah. um, it's interesting. There's like, I don't know, the, the iterations are, are pretty, pretty interesting. I think I only saw iteration one, so that's I'd kind of be curious to know, you know, sort what do you want? So it's working on me. <laughs> that's, yeah, yeah. That's the it's a curiosity part. factor that, that drives it. But it it's um, I don't know. They just came out with one recently, and, and like the thumbnail is this guy has like paint all over his like, <laughs> groin area, and, and there's an officer like, "What the fuck is this?" You know, and the guy's like, "Well, you know, it's 
And so it's... Uh, All the kids are wearing it now. It's alluding to, like, you know, some sort of drama. Like people are... Human beings are, are driven... Are drawn to that. And it's... Uh, it's... It's kind of obnoxious at times because... I agree. Um, you don't really progress. You're just kind of... You're just kind of feeding into, like, people's natural instincts to... I don't know, for whatever reason, like, we're drawn to to controversy or, or you're curious about it. And, and so there's not very much progress that gets made. But I concur. I, I think that he made an interesting solution. I don't know that it's going to be implemented or anything, but it's it's raising some questions. And maybe something will come out of it, like a better way to secure your packages or yeah. have, like, a better security system and whatnot. But I don't know. Did they ever tell you about the time I, I dealt with package theft on my end? No, I didn't. So I, I got 12 packages stolen one week by um, presumably the same guy. And um, I ordered like a lot of Amazon stuff, like maybe like 600 a year or so. And uh, it's it's a lot of money. It's Jeff Bezos uh, has me by the scrotum, as it were. <laughs> and so um, one week, I just six like twelve of my packages went missing, and and I was like, you know, screw this. I'm doing something about it. Uh, you know, hell or high water. I, I don't want this to happen anymore. And Amazon replaced all my packages, but it was kind of the principle of the thing. You know, I just I felt violated, and so I just installed a whole bunch of security cameras, and I got the guy doing it. Um, so on the recording. Uh, the FedEx driver comes, drops off the package, and then within one minute of the packet being dropped off, package being dropped off, um, somebody dressed similarly to a FedEx driver follows the same line as the FedEx driver. So there's a shrub, but they walk around it in the same exact way. Uh, they've even got a hat on that looks kind of like they work for a delivery company. They tuck the package into their lapel on their jacket, and then they follow the same line out. It was it was almost like impressive, like how huh. organized it was. Wow. And so, um, anyway, I, I gave the video to the cops, and within two weeks, they got the guy. Wow. Uh, never had that ever work, you know. If I've been robbed, like a police report, like yeah, 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 we'll do something about that. Never. He's probably done a lot of stuff if he's gonna bring it down to that much of a system. Well, what really infuriated me was I found a neighbor's package, so. I found a discarded package on my porch when one of mine went missing. It had a Rubik's Cube in it, and I guess that wasn't good enough to steal. And so I went and walked that over. I read the address, and I hand-returned it to the person that got it stolen from them. And I just, I don't know, it, like, you know, the balls of that. Like, it just, it just, it was, it was infuriating. And yeah, yeah. I mean, we've all been there. Like, you know, a heroic you're, approach. You're like, I need to stop this man. Yeah, but, <laughs> you know, I, I don't know what's going on in his life. He might have had some dark stuff going on. It's actually when the police called me, they, I feel like this has never happened in history, but they advocated not pressing charge. I wasn't going to anyway. All I wanted was my stuff back in an end of that. But um, they advocated not pressing charges um, because the person apparently had some serious mental problems. And, mm. you know, um, no problem. Just make sure I get my stuff reimbursed. Right. Yeah, so yeah. That was it. That's interesting. Yeah. Never, never glitter bombed anybody, though. So <laughs> maybe yeah. next time. Uh, it's, it's getting increasingly more challenging to like to joke and to you know, there's always gonna be that one person to say well I got glitter in my eye I'm suing you or like or like I have asthma and the fart spray like you know <laughs> it's just like yeah I hope everything with all this like cancel culture I hope we don't get to the point where like we just can't have fun because like even Sarah Silverman I mean she wrote her like you know, her whole career is about she's like, pretty funny making fun of people and then yeah. she went down the road of like you know being the social justice warrior and now she realized like shit I don't want to be a part of this anymore because I really? can't yeah she That's recently admitted like I can't I don't want to be a part of this or affiliated with any side she's not super PC I mean like as a comic she's got a pretty good sense of humor I feel like well she started making comments like oh like I don't care if you're from Boston and like when you say that's gay that just means that that's stupid like Saying that's gay hurts people that are gay. As a bisexual gay. man, I think that's gay is hilarious. Right. I, I mean, right. I'm probably weird to come out with that on the show. Right. But whatever. I, I think it's funny. I mean, I, I don't. I think there's no malice in that. Like from the perspective of someone that grew up in the '90s, is, is really where that comes yeah. from. It's just high school ball busting. Right. But you know, I mean, it, it's different than saying like you know, 
I don't like that you're gay. I mean, that's right, yeah, those yeah. are very different statements to right. me. But I don't well, know. that was just that was just something that she made a comment about it, yeah. and now she's well, gay kind people of, shouldn't get married. I mean, different than saying that's gay. I don't right? Know. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's yeah. it's pretty it's pretty harmless. But now you know. So it just you know, essentially, the people that have sort of cheered on this this PC culture are now like shit. This. Is affecting me and my livelihood and my work. <laughs> well, Sarah Silverman is not PC in her comedy. I mean, that's one of no, the no, redeeming no. qualities about her as a comic, in my opinion, is that, I mean, she she does talk about a lot of taboo topics, but in a way that takes the uh, the hurt out of them. Like, you know, I mean, I mean, she, <laughs> I, I don't want to go into detail on the show, but she's got some great bits. Yeah, she's yeah. definitely one of the, like the only females that actually makes me laugh. So I I respect her. She she's hilarious. Um, Actually, um, funny fact, um, so, I actually, I don't want to go into it in this podcast. She's got one joke in particular, and I'll tell you about after this, that, that really kind of increased my respect for her as a comedian, just just because of the sheer brazenness of it. You know? Right, yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. Comedy's under attack, but... It is, yeah. and it's, it's a weird time, because I think, like, it's getting lumped in with some truly horrendous stuff, like... Like racism and homophobia and sexism, like the fact that that a person that's otherwise logical could say like, you know, comedy is the same thing as that, you know, is is just it's it's unfortunate for the art. Yeah, because yeah. that's one of the things America is going for. We invented jazz, like hip hop and comedy, you know, and and those are truly American art forms. And and I mean, that's one of the things that makes me patriotic as an American is that freedom of expression. And, right. You know, just taking it to the next level with your creativity, and I don't yeah. know. I mean, if you can't do that, you know, then, then what are we doing here? So. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Yeah. Cool. So, do you have anything, uh, anything else in the works coming up? I know, I know, we've got that laser thing we talked about, but yeah, um, I keep having these these thoughts about like, uh, there's this really interesting cigarette lighter that I, I bought a whole bunch of on on the Alibaba and. Uh, there's a handle that folds out and it looks like a pistol and it, uh, there's a, like a slide switch that allows you to turn, uh, you know, strike. Oh, cool. The, that's like a, you know, strike the wheel and you have a, a regular lighter and then when you, when you pull the trigger, it, it becomes a jet flame. Oh, that's awesome. And so I want to like take the gold one and I want to put another laser in it so I have like a <laughs> like a James Bond like golden gun yeah yeah um, what, I can't remember what character carried the golden gun in James Bond yeah but. but I mean it's like he takes like the cigarette lighter the the uh, cuff links the pen and he like puts them all together and he makes this pistol and I thought that was really cool yeah so um, gotta rewatch some of those movies James Bond is so much fun yeah yeah for sure I, I, I hope they canceled a lot, lot of inspiration <laughs> from it um, I've had this idea for for a while. It's based off of the the movie Get Smart. He has this this Swiss Army knife that has like a blowgun, a crossbow, a <laughs> flamethrower. You know what I mean? Like, I was just thinking of all the different ways. There's so much could... stuff to condense into a Swiss Army knife. Yeah, exactly. It, it's totally unrealistic. It's all CGI. But uh. um, but I saw what was really cool. They 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 made the scales. Um, there's like a picture of it uh, on, on in a forum on our Facebook group. This guy took like an old PCB board or, or like an old uh, RAM stick and he cut it and he made it and he uh, puts some uh, glow in the dark green laminate or whatever and behind it and then he puts some epoxy over top of it and like it's just, it's just these PCB board tech looking tech infused knife scales for, for his, oh that's uh, cool scales for his for his Swiss army knife and I've like been envisioning this for the longest time and then I see what it looks like and he added that extra element of the glow in the dark and it just looks so sexy did and he put like urethane over it to make it like easier to grip or did he keep it with the uh, the PCB texture I think he made it no he put he put um he put the epoxy over top of it so Smart. that it would have a glossy look and so that it would, you know, be grip. So that's that, a knife you'd want to yield. Yeah. Yeah. I have to, I have to, I'll show you, but you could probably overlay some, some pictures of it, but it's cool. It's one of the coolest, coolest projects and I've had the idea for, for a while. So it was like cool to know that someone else had the same idea and 
you, like in the, in the past I'd be like oh shit like now they're stealing my thunder but now I'm like I'm <laughs> glad someone did it because it's sexy and I yeah and I hope this like this takes this takes root I just want to you know buy it if I have to but um in, in implementing that with this uh this Swiss Army knife would be really cool and um I have just so many components at home that I feel like I could probably do it in like a weekend but I have to this laser I, we have to like get it get it on the, on the off the workbench and, and get it sort of refined here. hey man no it's been a long time coming I, I definitely yeah, yeah. want to want to get that thing uh, yeah, in front of I, viewers I, I'm trying to I'm trying to break that I'm trying to struggle right now I'm struggling with trying to condense this massive project into content and where to cut is the challenge so like we have the the backpack the helmet the uh, addition on, on the side of the backpack that allows us to connect the deployable arm, the the pan tilt axis, the IMUs in there. I mean, it's just like I mean that's the thing about robotics is there's so many different yeah, subsystems yeah. and it's what components I'm, that come together. So it's either time or money. You know, right. You exactly. Take your pick. So like what I want to try to do to make it interesting is uh, boil down what innovation. Uh, we have put into each component and try to make uh, like a project or like a social situation in which that could be used like the, the telemetry of being able to have a helmet look where you know, point and tilt um, you could very easily uh, I don't know maybe implement that with like a camera or something for a security camera or uh, maybe you just want to point a laser pointer in someone's eye like one of those little cheaper ones for your cat or maybe you know you, know, you want the cat that's to a liability you just go like this way. and you don't have to hold the laser pointer you can like you know or set it automatically so that it'll entertain your cat you know what i mean so like that take, exists as a product by the way because i have it for my cats right exactly but yeah. like it's cool yeah, though take, i mean if you're take, lazy it's great for getting them to <laughs> stay in but just, yeah just like take that that component and make the proof of concept and put something into it just so that it's able to relate to a real life situation or like um so yeah that would be something or the the pan tilt unit like i was thinking about like or the uh, the hand control like I, I don't know why i just kept thinking about um being able to play a video game like guitar hero you know what I mean? like the because it feels like a guitar hero so for for those of you listening it's four buttons that are strapped to a person's hand, and I believe they control making the laser actually fire, uh, deploying the laser, so making it pop out of the backpack, making it go back in, which we're calling stowing, and then a, a calibration thing that's not important. Right. Really. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, you could totally do that with that because it feels yeah. the same as Guitar Hero. I bet you someone good at Guitar Hero would do well at that game. I right. Like yeah. Exactly. So, like, you know, basically taking taking all these different projects or taking the massive project and just dissecting it into smaller bite-sized pieces and then re reallocating uh, yeah reallocating the technology and into something with just a different theme or a script or something you know what i mean a lot and, of this stuff i think will be reusable i mean oh yeah you know, it's all modular well, it's yeah, all exactly. pretty well engineered and so yeah I mean, yeah, I mean, we've, we've, you're right. <laughs> we've had to build so many things yeah, and over like, multiple iterations. And yeah. that's why like this project a month thing, like if you have 10 people working for you, yeah. you can achieve that. But you know, well, if you're that's just... what your goal is. Like if you're trying to like, I think one of the challenges, uh, working with, uh, you know, an engineering company is like, where do you draw the line between trying to make content for the, for this, for the, the virality in a, in a in a reasonable time frame and being able to sort of flex your engineering brain muscles of like what do we accomplish yeah and sort of finding that meeting between like what can we do in a, in a in an amount of time that's still impressive um that's that's definitely been a challenge you know because i i want to do your company justice but at the same time like you know i, I don't want to spend so much time that we have at, we're at the point now where it's like been yeah. a couple of years but I do think that this is going to well, be well it's like been cool. about a year and a month or two but yeah, I yeah. Mean, the pandemic I think you know, yeah yeah probably exactly. contributed like time that. wise yeah. times time but we, could, we couldn't hang out and work on it for like a good you know, right, couple yeah. of months yeah. yeah so yeah it's probably not there but like so 
yeah I, I think I think what's starting to sort of come to fruition is that people there's so many different avenues of content you know you have your phone you have movies Netflix television radio podcasts um, people just like want smaller bite-sized content so like YouTube's come out with these YouTube uh, what are they called like snippets or moments I forget what exactly it is but it's kind of like a competitor to to uh, fine uh, no well the new one vine's gone <laughs> I'm so old man yeah the, the new one it, is yeah. TikTok so right it's, on it's yeah. just like you know you're filming almost like vlog style and I have a business partner who got I think 500,000 views on, on a video on there really that's just cool. lip syncing Dr. Evil his girlfriend put it up <laughs> it's on a private jet so it's kind of bourgeois but yeah that's really cool it was funny <laughs> Yeah, so it's it's challenging to like uh, sort of adapt when you, once you've mastered some form of content, like the al- the algorithm starts to fade for something else, and that's that's difficult to stay, you know, on the horse of sort, if you will. Like you know, you're you have to be very dynamic and, and flexible, and uh, so I I think it'll be it'll be fun. I, I have a couple ideas of how I want to do it, so I'm just kind of trying to bring things together. That's awesome. Cool. Well, uh, should we cut it or do you want to keep going? I feel like we're kind of at a good stopping point. Uh, yeah. You cool. cut it. All right. Thanks for viewing, guys. Uh, if you liked it, please subscribe and uh, hopefully we'll get to do many more of these. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming. Hey, if you like what you just saw, please smash that like button, click subscribe. It's your support that'll let us keep doing this. We can improve our production value, start releasing these more often. The more people like it, the more of these we're going to put out. So if you like it, subscribe, tell your friends. Thank you so much. You're the best.